Quantum Supremacy by Ethan at Starts With a Bang and Laura at Lalina Menenti. As human beings, whenever we encounter a problem that's difficult to solve, there are some universal steps we try to take. We attempt to devise an algorithm that breaks the complex problem down into smaller, simpler components that we do know how to solve. This is easier for some problems than others. Solving an equation like x equals 2 plus 3 requires only simple mathematics, but factoring a 100-digit number takes more mathematical power than nearly all of us have at our brain's disposal. That's where computers come into play. By storing information in a circuit and performing repetitive tasks over and over as efficiently as possible, many computationally intensive problems can be solved in a fraction of a second. The way it works for most traditional computers, known as classical computers, is that you can take a small number of basic operations, logical commands like AND, OR, NOT, and IF-THEN statements, and break your algorithm down to those low-level functions in order to solve those problems. As classical computers get faster and more powerful, and as programmers develop progressively more efficient algorithms, the computational time required to solve even very difficult problems becomes smaller and smaller. However, there are some problems we can pose to a computer, like how a protein composed of 10,000 amino acids will fold that would take impractically long amounts of time to solve. But for those computationally intractable problems, there's still a hope. Quantum computers. Alright, you've reached YouTube's average retention time, but please don't leave us now! This is where the big idea of quantum supremacy comes from, the notion that a quantum computer can solve certain problems efficiently, in rapid fashion, where a classical computer can only solve it inefficiently, in an unfeasible amount of time. Instead of using regular bits of information like a classical computer, where a bit can be either a zero or a one, quantum computers use quantum bits of information known as qubits, which can not only be zero or one, but any possible probabilistic superposition of both states simultaneously. Many of the logical operations that you can perform in a computationally inexpensive fashion on a quantum computer are presently extremely computationally expensive on a classical computer. In late 2019, for the first time, researchers from Google used a 53-qubit quantum computer to solve a specially designed problem that, they contend, would have taken a classical computer 10,000 years to solve. Their quantum computer solved it in just a few minutes. Does this mean humanity has achieved the dream of quantum supremacy? Although the 53-qubit computer has outperformed a classical computer for a specially designed problem with no foreseeable practical application, by definition, quantum supremacy has still been achieved. IBM recently showed that it can simulate the Google 53-qubit experiment in two and a half days rather than the 10,000 years originally claimed by Google using their Summit supercomputer with 250 petabytes of storage. But nobody denies the exponential character of the experiment. Simply going from 53 to 55 qubits would surpass Summit's capacity. While it may yet still be possible for a superior algorithm to ultimately reduce the computational time of Google's 53-qubit computer, it is clear that someday soon classical computers will be non-competitive with quantum ones. It is clear, though, that we've just passed an enormous milestone. It may just be one more step along the path towards our ultimate goal of using a quantum computer to solve useful problems like protein folding or predicting behaviors of other many-body quantum systems that are too computationally expensive for a classical computer. With a likely demonstration of quantum supremacy, our quantum computational dreams seem closer to reality than ever before.